Designer Notes, Subject 58. A smartwatch today can do so much more than tell the time. And, well, timing something. It can be loaded with many programs that the kids nowadays call apps. And these apps can vastly change the capability of the watch. It can also tell a number of time zones along with more interesting information about them. All of this while being able to customize what features and face your watch would need to carry based on your preferences. It's a true personal computer in many aspects. The computers we strap on our wrist now is more powerful than the whole NASA control center that put a man on the moon just a few decades ago. However, there's a more interesting computer that you can strap on your wrist. We just need to know a few things how to use it. The slide rule is a computing device that's made of two or three rulers with logarithm scales. These slide rules were used in the early 20th century as an aid for engineers and scientists to help them make complicated computations before the advent of electronic computers. These somehow made its way onto watches with the Navitamer popularizing this slide rule bezel. But how does it work? Like, comment, and subscribe for content you'd like to see next. Follow us on Instagram at Design Atelier Aruba for behind-the-scenes content. Email us at designatelierviewer at gmail.com. The first thing to know about slide rules is that it uses logarithmic scales. These are scales that increases in value but represented visually in decreasing marker distance. Take for example the distance of 10 to 20 in this scale. It is farther than the distance of 20 to 30. The distance exponentially decreases the more we move along the scale. Notice too that the point on the bezel where it's supposed to be 100 is exactly at the point where the 10 is. This is where we can just make the mental jump. That 10 represents 100. You are in effect moving the decimal point of a value backwards. On the slide rule, this can be done forwards or backwards. So in order for you to read 2.65, you simply slide to the point between 26 and 27, which is now the representation of 2.65. This is the same spot for 0 0.0265 and 26,500. The scale is useful regardless of the value. It just assumes that the user made that computation in his head. So that is why the 10 marker is painted in red because that's the point where your chosen number crosses the log function. So let's try our hand in multiplication. First, you need to find the red 10 marker on the inner or fixed scale. This is your multiplication and division index. A general thing to keep in mind is that the numbers on both the fixed and rotating scales are divisible and multiplicable to tens. Once you align your rotating bezel number over this index, in this case the number 14, you can begin looking for your calculated equivalent. These corresponding numbers are on the fixed scale. Let's make this a little more realistic. Let's say you want to give 8 of your closest buddies a $14 cheesecake slice for your Navitimer party. How much would it cost? Multiplying these two will yield a product of 112 which is represented by 11.2. 11.2 raised by the power of 10 would mean 112. This is conveniently aligned with the number 8. As a matter of fact, this clever slide rule just instantaneously calculated for you the rest of the other numbers that can be multiplied for the number 14. So now you know how much it would cost to have extra slices in case that Cousin Vinny crashes your party. Now what about division? Division, of course, is the reverse of multiplication and is also done by reversing this process. So, after crashing your party, Cousin Vinny proposed a premium beer business that both of you can get into. 
He proposes to you how much it would cost, and now you need to find the unit cost of the case of the premium beer. It's $75 per case, and each case has 12 units. To do this in your Nabitimer, you now need to move the number 75 on the rotating bezel to the number 12 on the fixed scale. You'll now find the answer from the red 10 marker, which is now a division index. In this example, it's 62.5. Of course, 62.5 lowered by 10 is now 6.2. That's $6.20 per bottle. That's some pricey premium beer, but Vinny sure is persuasive, and he proceeds to pitch his proposal. He needs $50,000 to begin production, with you pitching in 35%. So now you have to figure out how much 35% of $15,000 would be. Now find 50 on the bezel and line it up in the 10 index. Look for 35 in the inner scale and find the matching number as the product which is 17.5. So Vinny is in fact asking you to invest more than $17,000 for his business proposal. But of course you don't have $17,000 lying around so you want to start to negotiate while still looking at your watch. In your head, you can spare around $12,000 and you wanted to keep in conversation with Vinny about percentages. So, without even fiddling with the bezel, you just have to slide your eye to the 12 for 12,000 and glance at the 24.2% lined up for that number. You have just now delivered a counter proposal to Vinny with one turn of the bezel. But enough of this fantasy party trick. Can the Navitimer slide rule actually be any better than any mobile device today, say the Apple Watch? Let's try and find out. Let's do a mildly challenging computation. Let's multiply 710 by 42. We'll have the Apple Watch and the slide rule of the Navitimer solve this formula at the same time. Hey Siri, what is 710 multiplied by 42? It's 29,820. In a weird twist of a human using an electronic watch against an electronic device using a human watch, a surprising result emerges. It takes longer for the human to input the problem for the Apple Watch to solve than it is for the slide rule to formulate the problem by its sliding process. For the slide rule, the results are instantaneous and even scalable for some variations of the same problem. On the Apple Watch, you will need to re-input these variations to get the results. The slide rule excels in efficiency. However, the downside of the slide rule is its accuracy. Since you can only cram so many markers on a scale, the inevitable approximation of numbers will occur. In this case, we're off by about 180 units out of the 29,000. It's close, but not accurate. If you know or practice enough, you can actually use the slide rule for everyday use. You need to convert miles to kilometers? Just slide it over the miles per hour marker and now you know it's conversion. A few seconds faster than Siri, of course. Let's try and convert 88 miles into kilometers. Slide 88 at the red KM marker on top of the MPH index. Then on the fixed red 10 index, you will find the equivalent value in kilometers. Paired with the chronograph, road trips become ever more so efficient. Simply start the chronograph, stop it at the point that your car has run for a mile, and you now have your speed per hour. Find the red 60 on your slide rule and align it where the chronograph hand stopped. And now you have the scale for distance and speed. Let's say you want to arrive at your destination in 45 minutes. If it's a mile away, you should be traveling at around 92 miles per hour. Without ignoring driving safety, of course. Fuel consumption is normally associated with the aviation industry. But tell you what, you can use these computations too for any sort of traveling. Let's say you're going to pay a visit to your fantastical cousin Vinny's beer startup. Knowing your car uses about 0.3 gallons of gasoline per hour, 
you look at your gauge and you have about 3 quarters of a gallon left in the tank. When should you make an efficiently timed pit stop? Let's move our slide rule bezel sturdy on top of the MPH marker. This will represent our 0.3 gallons per hour that our car moves at. Now, we need to make a mental assumption of the 3 quarters of a gallon into the same unit format as our 0.3. That will lead us to 0.75 or 75% for 3 quarters and represented by 75 on our bezel. Now just read that value on our fixed scale and we will get 150 minutes. But of course, being the reasonable person that we are, just fill out your tank on the next gas station in sight. Let's say now that you're in traffic and you're moving at 43 miles per hour and your destination is about 50 miles away. This is where the red 60 marker comes in. Move the red 60 on the outer scale and align it at the 43 on the inner scale. While still in the inner scale, look for the number 50. That matching number on the outer scale will be our estimated time of arrival. In this case, it's 70 minutes or 1 hour and 10 minutes. So far, we've been showing you the iconic Breitling Navitimer slide rule. However, there are other slide rules that are even more loaded with indexes for conversion and calculations. The Seiko Flightmaster, for example, is an affordable, more computation-ready alternative to the Navitimer. Around the bezel, you can see more conversions such as the pounds to kilogram conversions, fuel and oil pounds, and even US and Imperial gallon conversions. Other notable watches that use the slide rule is the Hoyer Calculator, the Oleg and Watch Computer Slide Rule Military Aviator, Ecopods Megapod, and the Formex AS6500 Chronograph. The slide rule on watches is interestingly nostalgic to the older generation. It's a precursor to computers that older nerds out there grew up with that we even barely know exists. It doesn't require batteries. It can survive even if the watch that it's attached to has long become an overvalued paperweight. And amazingly, it's still found on watches today after they have been made obsolete by a humble calculator. Many of us are oblivious to these slide rule watches, but once you've found and understood them, you'll be fascinated by them to say the least. And they're incredibly useful in everyday life calculations. Computers have been subject to the law of diminishing returns for a while now. Oh, your computer has 8 cores? That's nice. My phone can display 4K. Sweet, right? As we get more and more desensitized with electronics, we develop a pleasant appreciation for obsolete analog devices such as the slide rule. A personal appreciation for a computer. Oh, and as a bonus, they're also collectible too. Something we can only wish for this computer.